But better late than never, welcome. It's my favorite. Let's go. Fucking Anton Lander. I like, really like the back milk shower. Like bag milk. This is Ceases. 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 Who are you? Ceases. Tyler, your rem check is so fucking sexy. Yes, he is. Ceases. Fucking Anton Lander. Nah. Lander. Let's go. Better late than never. This is so fucking sexy. Welcome, everybody. Better late than never. Episode 15. Bag Milk here. I'm very excited. I'm excited to be back. It's been over a week since the last podcast. A lot has happened since then. I got a lot to get to. So without wasting everybody's time and without pretending like I didn't plan this today, we might as well just jump into it. So I got to say shout out to our friends at Arcadia. Shout out to our friends at Arcadia Yeg for making this all possible. ArcadiaYeg.com. That's Y-E-G. Arcadia Y-E-G. That's where you get all of the info. That's just your basics, right? If you're on the socials, go to Arcadia Brewing Co. on Instagram, Arcadia Brew Co. on Twitter. Got it? Of course you do. The people at Arcadia are fantastic. They are. And I won't have any other conversations. Not one. Not even the slightest of conversations. Not one. Mm -mm. On September 9th from 7 p.m. until, you know, whenever, Arcadia is doing a fundraiser to help out the Ukraine with DJ Mike Thomas. Join them on Saturday, April 9th, as we throw a fundraiser for Ukraine. Head on over to Arcadia's Instagram page. They've got all the details you need on the latest post. That's Arcadia Brewing Co. Arcadia Brewing Co. Got it? Good. So a lot to get to this week. The Oilers are 3-1 and one since our last podcast. We don't need to talk about what happened on Saturday. We don't need to talk about that. We don't need to pretend like I was down at the Saddle Dome and that bad things happened. But... We do have a lot of other things, a lot of good things that happen. So let's get to the news. The news is brought to you by Manscaped. Manscaped Manscaped.com. After lighting the lamp, hit the showers with this all-in-one skin and hair care kit that covers you from head to toe. Literally. Manscaped is trusted below the waist, and now trust them with the rest. Join 4 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped by going to manscaped.com for 20% off your order and free shipping, but you got to use the code BETTER20, B-E-T-T-E-R-20, BETTER20. Again, you go to manscaped.com, you pick out what you need, you pick out what your toolkit needs, the toolkit for your tools. And then you enter BETTER20 as your promo code. You're going to get 20% off and free shipping. Got it? Of course you do. You're very intelligent. You're very handsome. Now, I beg of you. I beg of you. Clean up those beans. You know? Nobody wants to see fuzzy beans. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. So where should we start? Last week, we recorded on Wednesday. Today, it is Thursday, March 31st, 6 o'clock as we're getting going. What happened since? Well, let me tell you. The Oilers, as I mentioned off the jump, 3-1 and one over that time over the last week since we last spoke to each other. A couple of good games in there. Actually, a trio of good games in there. Well, now that I say that out loud, maybe I, maybe I don't believe that as much. However, there was one bad game in there as well. We'll get to all of it. So Wednesday we recorded. That was the 23rd. We're like, man, Oilers really need to beat San Jose. What happened? Absolute shit kicking. That's what happened. Absolute shit kicking. Yeah! However, why are you so pissy? The game against Calgary, that was my first game in two and a half years. My first NHL game in person in two and a half years. (laughs) 
that's what that's how I felt about it. Now, to be fair, I will admit that game was a lot of fun to be at. It's not every day you go to an NHL game when 14 goals get scored, you know? But, unfortunately, when you're a fan of the losing team, it's not great. It's not great. But what I will say is I'm very, very happy for everybody that joined us on the bus down to Calgary. I'm very, very happy that I was able to go to a game again, just feel a little bit of normalcy, party with the crew, party with the staff at Nation HQ that made their way down. It was just, man, I missed it. I really did. I missed it, even though the Saddle Dome is a complete dump. But you know what? You live, you learn, you party, you move on. It was fun. It was fun. And you know what? A little bit of spiciness in the Battle of Alberta, that gets the juices flowing. That's what I learned. So, yes, the Oilers sucked. Five on five, at least. Nine five on five goals. Nine even strength goals against. What are you going to say about it? Nothing. You can't say anything good about it. We move on. We move on. On Monday... Nice bounce back against the Arizona Coyotes. Now the Coyotes are terrible. However, you still had to win that game, and you still had to blow them out, and that's exactly what happened. Last night, Wednesday, Los Angeles Kings, we got another victory to talk about. But it wasn't the prettiest. It wasn't the prettiest victory. Now, do you nitpick wins? Sure. You could say that the Oilers were a little bit sloppy. They probably should have beat a team that was missing eight regulars more than by a shootout goal. Uh, but at the end of the day, the team I enjoy, the team I support, the team I love, they're the ones that won. They're the ones that won. So that is just the way it goes. That's the way it goes. Now, with three wins and a loss under our belts between uh, since the last time we spoke, what does the standings look like? Well, glad you asked. Your old pal Bag Milk is here for you as always. Right now, as I record this on Thursday, March 31st, the Edmonton Oilers are in third place in the Pacific Division, 81 points. They're trailing the Los Angeles Kings, who have played 69 games. They have 82 points. So we got a game in hand, one point back. Calgary, they're at 66 games played. They're at 88 points. They're up for a good losing streak, I feel like. They've lost their last one. I feel like a good run of losses for them is where they need to be. Now, Las Vegas, they are currently in fourth in the Pacific. They've got 78 points with 69 games played. That means we got a little bit of space, but it's not a lot. We'll just play Vegas next week. We're going to look ahead at the schedule for next week a little bit later. But let me tell you, it is getting mighty, mighty, mighty tight. It's getting mighty, mighty tight down the stretch, and the only way to make this work is to get more wins. So, Oilers won their last two. Vegas, unfortunately, they've won their last three. Los Angeles, they've lost two in a row. Calgary's lost one. Back behind them, Vancouver's lost two in a row. We'll see what happens. As for the Oilers, they've got a huge week coming up. So, Friday, that's tomorrow. That's April 1st, April Fool's Day. The St. Louis Blues are in town. That's going to be a tough one. It's going to be a tough one. The Oilers need to find a way to figure that out. They're getting healthy again. They're playing well, mostly. If you look at the fancies last night, at 5-on-5 at least, the Oilers were really, really good against the Kings. However, refing, it was bad. It was terrible. It was really, really awful. And I don't even really want to talk about it too much because the refs are just so bad. All right, I'll let them have a little bit. After tomorrow night's game against St. Louis, you've got the Ducks on Sunday. That's my birthday, by the way. So if you're looking to send presents, if you're looking to figure out something to do for your boy Bag Milk, well, all I ask is that you reach out into the heavens, you reach out into the universe, and you ask the hockey guards, you say, Excuse me, hockey guards. It's Bag Milk's birthday today. Please win. Please allow the Oilers to win. And let's be honest, the Ducks are terrible. As of today, as of Thursday, they lost 10 in a row. They've lost 10 in a row, and I'm thinking that is a game the Oilers absolutely have to win. Thank you! You're welcome. Right? You can't be the team that breaks that 10-game slide. You just can't. You can at all, and I refuse to be the team that breaks that 10-game slide. So if the Ducks play between now and Sunday, if somebody else beats them, or if they beat somebody else, I don't care. But on Sunday, 6 o'clock. Your boy Bagmill's going to be celebrating. I want to have the win on there as well. So we've got St. Louis Friday. 
Anaheim Sunday, San Jose Tuesday, LA again on Thursday, Colorado missing Nathan McKinnon, mind you, on Saturday. He got in a scrap last week. Injured. Maybe that should be my question for next week. Do you want your superstar player fighting? I'm trying to think about that. If, if Connor McDavid or Leon Dreisaitl got in a scrap, would I love it? Well, hmm. thinking there. In the moment, I probably would. In the moment, I would probably love it. If I saw Connor drop the mitts and he was starting to chuck him with somebody, I'd be like, whoa, what is going on? You know? What is going on? It might be time. Now, if he gets hurt, obviously that's a problem, but any fight could lead you to an injury. So, mm, now I'm humming and hawing. I need an answer. I need to be definitive. This is my podcast. I need to give my takes. I say do it, but you better pick your spots. You better pick your spots. Again, can you imagine Rogers plays? Leon no Dreisaitl drops and it's absolutely dummy somebody because he's a giant German machine. Beautifully engineered. Beautiful on the outside. <laughs> Everybody's having a good time with that. Everybody's having a good time with that. Okay, so... Looking ahead at last night, Connor McDavid, for the fifth time in his career, hit 100 points. Before the game, he was asked about hitting the century mark again, and of course, Connor does not really... He doesn't care about these things, at least not in the media, and this is what he said. Like Leo said, I mean, we've, we've, we've been there, we've done that. I mean, it's time to, it's time to, to, to win, and um, um, you know, that's, that's all that really matters. It is time to win. Leon Dreisaitl said it too. He doesn't care. They both won the heart. They both won the MVP or the Art Ross. They have both won all of it. So what's the difference? Let's get some wins in the playoffs. That's different, right? But, again, Connor last night got his 100 points, run away with the Art Ross again. Leon Dreisaitl tied with Austin Matthews from Toronto at 49 goals. Again, as I'm recording today at 6 o'clock. I haven't checked. The Leafs play today? I don't even care if they do. I still think Leon's going to get it. I really, really do. I really do. So since those two were shooting for milestone seasons, Leon Dreisaitl at 49 goals, Connor hit his 100th point last night. What has Jay Woodcroft learned about these two dudes? He's known them for a while, remember. He was the assistant coach with Tom McClellan. By the way, Tom McClellan's still getting a haircut every 12 minutes. I respect it. That's the consistency you can set your watch to. Now, back to Connor and Leon. What does Jay Woodcroft say about them, having known them in their rookie seasons? Well, there you go. You've had a chance to know Connor and Leon, for that matter, for, for quite a while, dating back to your time, obviously, as an assistant coach. Uh, well, how have you seen their games evolve uh, over the last little while, and especially over the last five, six weeks that you've been able to coach them? Yeah, uh, over time, uh, when I first got to know them, they were just very, very young men in a man's league. Uh, so the first thing I would say is they physically have matured into, um, you know, just... Uh, sizable human beings in a man's league here um and so just their body composition has has changed and and uh so that would be the first way that i've say, seen them evolve over the last seven years or so um i also think mentally um they're at a different stage than where they were at when they first uh got into the national hockey league as players uh i've seen maturity in their games as well um i don't think they get enough credit for by the way Sorry, Coach Woodcroft, to cut you off, but I do appreciate that you are talking about their musculature. They've grown into strapping young men. I can't shake that. Anyway, as you were. Um, how they handle the dis defensive side of things. Uh, I see a lot of growth in Connor's um, defensive zone coverage, his, his willingness uh, to just... Um, come in and uh, assess the situation in D zone and, and be in the proper position. Uh, when it comes to Leon, I feel quite comfortable putting him on in the ice and penalty kill situations. We've done that with Connor recently as well, but uh, five on three situations against uh, feel really good about Leon on the ice. So um, I've seen a lot of it. Uh, I've seen their game evolve. 
How about the vocal fry on Coach Woodcroft there? Uh, anybody listen to the Stern Show? Just me? Surveyor Brett, where are you at? Over over that time. And uh, one of the last areas, I think they're both a lot better in the face-off circle than they were uh, when I first got to know them. I think that's a factor of learning the league and a factor of them growing into their, their bodies as well. I love when I love when Jay Woodcroft speaks to the media because I know I read, let that clip run a little bit longer than I probably wanted. It was I could have cut it off early, but I just like the way he speaks to the media. Even though, like, even last night, and I'm paraphrasing, of course, last night the Oilers beat the Kings. It wasn't pretty. It wasn't perfect. But you know what? You take the victory. You move on with your life. He refused to say anything bad about the team outside of, oh, you can clean up some details or whatever. The way he speaks, the messaging from this dude is just incredible. And that's why, again, if you, in case you don't remember, that's why I gave him his own music a little while ago. That's why this is, of course, the Jay Woodcroft music on Better Late Than Ever. If you know, you know. Right? I love it. I absolutely love it. I love the way that guy speaks and just the positivity. You feel it. You feel it as a fan. You feel it. Another news? A guy who got the chance to play his first home games as an Oiler after being traded, Brett Kulak. I was really interested to see what a guy from Stony Plain would say about playing for the Oilers. Uh, obviously, his hometown club played all over the league a little bit. Just got him from Montreal. When asked about his time with the Oilers, again, he's just getting started. Here's what Brett Kulak said, and I loved it, and I think he will too. Lots of fans, family in that who love the Oilers, and they love seeing me wearing the jersey, and uh, they still still tell me it's a pretty surreal feeling for them seeing that. And uh, I'm really proud to be an Oiler, and I'm having lots of fun so far. How can you not love that? How can you not love a guy coming home to play in front of his friends and family and his parents get to go to the games and he was probably having Oilers jerseys when he was a little kid? That shit rules. I love it. You know what else I love? This was from a couple of days ago against Arizona. Ryan McLeod had himself a whale of a game. He and Miko Koskinen were sharing the post-game presser duties together. And... Nico Koskinen was asked what makes Ryan McLeod so good, and I just clipped a little bit of it because it was just, it was really adorable. Also, a really good uh, locker room player. Thanks. Hello. Oh. And six seconds of adorableness. He's also a really good locker room player, and Ryan McLeod just goes, thanks. Doesn't Ryan McLeod have Ryan Smith vibes? I'm just saying, he lets that hair grow out in the back specifically, and he trims it around the sides. Tell me I'm wrong. Tell me I'm wrong. I'm not. I'm just not wrong. I'm just not. I'm just not. Not me yet. Uh, Another thing that happened this week with the Oilers, this was one of the weirdest things that I've ever seen. I've never seen this before in my life, and as it turns out, it is an NHL record in the modern era. Evander Kane, four penalties, four straight penalties. It started late in the second period against the Coyotes, and then it carried on into the third period with three straight penalties after that. I've never seen a guy get a penalty, get out of the box, go right back in, get out of the box again, go right back in, out of the box for a third time, and then right back in. In the span of 741, Evander Kane set an NHL record in the modern era for most penalties in the shortest span of time. He didn't even get off the ice. Last night in the broadcast against the against the Kings, they showed Jay Woodcroft being like, hey, don't do that. You know? <laughs> the best absolutely the best uh xavier borgo today a little bit of housekeeping getting done by the oilers are the former what was he 22nd overall i wrote it down somewhere i'm sorry i'm ill prepared xavier borgo assigned a three-year entry level deal today with the edmonton oilers that carries thanks to our friends at puckpedia carries an annual 
average hit of $1.1675 million. So he is the 22nd overall pick from 2021. He got himself a fresh contract today. Shout out to his Xavier Borgo. He's having himself a whale of a season with Shawinigan. 31 games played. He's got 26 goals, 25 assists for 51 points. This kid can score. I don't know when he will be with the Oilers, but I am very, very much looking forward to when he gets a chance to play pro. Four years in junior, it's time. It's time. You know another guy who's sneaking up on us a little bit? How about Dylan Holloway? Our boy had a whale of a game last night. We posted a great assist he uh, he got with the Condors on our Instagram channel. So that's OilersNation.com. Dot is spelled D-O-T. All of a sudden, Holloway has six assists in his last three games played with the with the Condors. And remember, he's not playing with a whole lot of skill down there, so he's doing a lot of it on his own a little bit, at least based on what I could see. Now, I'm going to fully admit I don't watch a whole lot of Condors hockey, but based on what I've read, this kid is improving, and I wonder what it's going to take to get him up here with the Oilers. Is Dylan Holloway better than, I don't know, Last night, Josh Archibald got removed from Nuge's line very, very quickly, as did Derek Broussard. Is Dylan Holloway better than one of those guys? I'm just asking questions. I'm just asking questions. First of all, what went through my mind is how stupid am I? (laughs) Uh, Another thing I want to mention before we wrap up the news here this week is that yesterday in hockey history, March 30th, 1979, the NHL merged with the WHA. A little bit of Oilers history for you there. So yesterday, March 30th, 1979, the NHL merged with the WHA. Now we get to cheer for Connor McDavid all these years later. You don't like that? Well, you have to wait till next week when I got a new round of news for you. The news is brought to you by Manscaped.com. Again, after lighting the lamp, hit the showers with this all-in-one skin and hair care kit that covers you from head to toe. Manscaped is trusted below the waist. Now trust them with the rest of you. Join the 4 million men worldwide who have trust Manscaped by going to manscaped.com using the promo code BETTER20 and getting 20% off your order and free shipping. Again, that is promo code BETTER20. Do me a favor. Fucking clean your life up. Nobody wants to see your hairy balls. I have a list of things that I'm not allowed to say for this ad read. Nobody wants to see your hairy balls is not on that list. (laughs) So there you go. Manscaped.com, better 20. There is your promo code. And that is the news for the week. Caution. This podcast may contain traces of cheese and cherries. And with that, back to our regular programming. It is time for The Good Life. Welcome to the good life. Last weekend, as I mentioned off the jump, I was able to go down to Calgary. That was my first game in two years, two and a half years. And unfortunately, the Oilers got absolutely dummied by the Flames. But, you know, you can bounce back from that. They did. They did. So, I just, man, I just really, really missed going to live games. And... It was so much fun to get back on a bus with a bunch of nation citizens and go and experience it all together. And the chants were going, and we were giving away prizes, and Nation Dan was doing trivia, and we do our, our we were doing our thing, and it just felt right, it felt normal, it felt good. And as it turns out, the game we ended up going to was pretty fucking crazy, right? Well, the score first, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Third period falls apart, <laughs> but. It gave me the question, what is the wildest hockey game or sporting event you've ever been to? And I think I might have some of these coming up in the voicemail. I know some of you guys were dropping those in after I asked the question on Twitter. But I also asked again today on Twitter, and some I got some really great answers to go through here. So the best part about sports to me is just how random it is. You never know what's going to happen. There's nothing scripted about it. Or is there? There's nothing that you you don't know what's going to happen from period to period or even shift to shift. So that's what I love about sports. And your guys' answers came through. What is the wildest hockey game or sporting event you've ever been to? And if you missed it on Twitter or on Instagram, just hit me up. Just 
slide back into the voicemail or hit me up on Twitter and just be like, hey, I missed the voicemail call. I missed the call on the podcast. I want to chime in. I'll read them next week. Uh, Kabir, he chimes in. Gagne, eight point night. Nothing even comes close. I mean, that is an absolute beauty. Hard to argue that one. Sam Gagne, just all around good guy. Greg says, uh, or Gorg, Gorg says, game five against San Jose. Clefbaum ties it in the third, and Derek DeHarnay wins it in OT. Insanity. I was also there. I was also there. And if you remember, that was the Clefbaum. Ding! It was that one. If you remember, go look, go Google it. Listen for the ping. Guarantee you hear it. That was an excellent one. I was lucky enough to be there as well. Uh, Pierre says, I was at the 27. 27- Teen Ryan Kessler pad holding game in Anaheim can still remember the Ducks fans next to us all leaving early because they thought the game was over. Also remember the sheer rage I felt when they said there wasn't goaltender interference. That game we were having a playoff party at the pint, and I don't know if I've ever heard a building with that many people in it. Like we were packed in there. I don't know if I've ever heard a building with that many people in it that quiet. You could hear a pin drop, to use that cliche. You could hear just random conversations from the other side of the room. It was dark in there. <clears throat> I like this one that came in too. Uh, Lang says a U15 double A tournament game this year where both goalies were pulled. Both teams needed a goal to advance. I know it's not a pro sport, but I had never witnessed anything like that before. Uh, Bucky just says I went to a demolition derby before. It was awesome. Shout out to the demolition derbies. I'm from a small town where they have one every year. Shout out to demos. Uh, the Nidge says he was at a game November 19th, 2011. The young guns explode on the Chicago Blackhawks for a 9-2 win. I'm looking at Taylor Hall. I'm looking at Ryan Nugent Hopkins and I'm looking at Jordan Everly. Do you remember Hope? Remember Hope? Vagrant Machine says, I'm not sure about the wildest as far as the game went. However, I was at the game where Sergei Fedorov defected. That is, (laughs) I mean, that's pretty wild. Yeah, that is wild. Insta Classic says, I was at the bat flip game. Okay, we're talking a little bit Jays. A little bit of Jays. I like that as well. If you missed it, I was on Blue Jays Nation Radio earlier this week. I'll be doing a little bit of writing over there this year. I'm just going to be keep it casual. I'm just getting into it. I'm going to be a fan voice on BlueJaysNation.com. It's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. Uh, I was thinking about my wildest game that I've ever been to, so... Saturday against Calgary. It was just weird. It was maybe not the wildest game of all time or anything, but I don't know when I've ever been to a game that had 14 goals in it. Another wild game I went to was the Heritage Classic in Winnipeg. After a long bus ride, we had a multi-hour sun delay, only to have the Oilers absolutely dummy the Winnipeg Jets. It was great. Again, nothing crazy wild, but just the scene was spectacular. Having that many people in the football arena. I don't know what the football stadium is called in Winnipeg, but having that many people there Having Chris the intern spend all my money on Bud Lights. You know? Love that. Another one I could think of is I was at the game when Smitty got his teeth knocked out, came back in OT, and got an assist on Hork, or came back later in the game, got an assist on Horkov's OT winner. I was also at game six against Detroit, where the Oilers knocked out the cup favorite again, 2006. So if you're if you're hearing these stories, if you're hearing some of these and you want to chime in with the wildest game you were ever at, it doesn't have to be hockey, by the way. You want to tell me about, again, we saw the bat flip come in here. If you want to talk about a different sport entirely, I want to hear about that. I want to hear about that. I also want to know if you've ever slapped someone before, but I didn't get any answers about if anybody's ever slapped someone before. And I wish I did because that's what I really wanted to hear about. I wasn't allowed to talk about the Will Smith thing on the Real Life Podcast today, but I was fine with it mostly because I was just like, well, The reality is that I will have my own podcast coming up later, and I will just ask there. It was weird. It was a weird scene. I don't care about the Oscars at all, and yet I'm still talking about the Oscars. Will Smith made it interesting, albeit completely inappropriate and absolutely insane, allegedly, in my opinion. (laughs) You can't just go up and slap somebody. (laughs) Like, you can't. You can't. It was just absolutely bananas. It was like, hello, who is it? Oh, it's insanity. Oh, hello. You're going to go up and slap somebody? All right. (laughs) 
So I knew I was going to talk about this a little bit today, and I'm going to move on already. So I was just like, I'm going to find a skin slap sound effect for my soundboard. And this is what I get. <laughs> All right. That was silly. That was nonsense. That was nonsense. So there you go. Welcome to the good life. Welcome to the good life. Another couple of things I want to mention with my good life segment is very, very important to me because I got to give a shout out to my boy Waz. Welcome to the good life. Waz is now 6-0 and when he and our graphic designer Kennedy go to the Edmonton Oilers games together this year. At this point, I'm thinking that either Jay or new boss Amar they just need to get them tickets. So those two are always together. We will be undefeated at home, and we're all laughing. Shout out to you guys. Another shout out goes to our boy Ben Stelter. He is 3-0 and when he's in the house. I absolutely love the support he's getting from this city. I saw he got a standing ovation last night at Roger's place when he was showing up on the big screen. I absolutely love it. I loved hearing Connor talk about how he lights up the room anytime he's around the boys. Absolutely love that. Please, Ben, we need you. We need you to be at these games. We need you cheering loudly. We need your spirit. We need your energy. We need you to be there, Ben. Like I said, 3-0 when he's in the house. We need to get Ben's season tickets. We need to make sure that he is doing his part to get everything done. Ben, I love you, buddy. Why is that another request? Came in. He said, Bag Milk, can you explain why Connor's interview style, people think he's boring? Well, got to go back to this guy right here. Like Leo said, I mean, we've, we've been there, we've done that. I mean, it's time to, it's time to, to, to win. And, um, um, you know, that's, that's all that really matters. You think he's boring? Maybe Connor's just more of a subdued personality. And you have him with his boys. Here's what I always thought with Connor is if when he's with his boys, he opens up a little bit. He's in his comfort zone. He doesn't want to talk to the media. It's just like me. Waz tells me about people recognizing him in public all the time. And I just think, man, you're living my nightmare, my guy. But I'm happy for you because you're happy to do it. Connor's in a job where he can't just hide it behind the scenes like I do. He needs to speak to the media. And like uh like a lot of superstars before him he's been media trained for his entire life so i'm just going to go ahead and imagine that the guy's just he's just doing it because he has to do it not because necessarily he wants to so was it's part of the job why do people think connor's boring i don't know because he doesn't give any answers that are any fun again that goes to media training you want fun answers you go to leon that's why they are the yin and the yang right of course welcome to the good life the Good Life brought to you by Arcadia Brewing. Go check them out at Arcadia Brewing Co. on Instagram and Arcadia Brew Co. on Twitter. Again, they're having a fundraiser on April 9th for Ukraine. Go check them out. Check out the Instagram post. I've got all the details right in there. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for everybody's favorite segment, or not. It's the Rick Hand Distillery voicemail. <laughs> RigHandDistillery.com. That's where I'm going to tell you to go every single week. You're going to check out the tour and tasting coupon. You're going to download it. You're going to go up to NISKU, and you're going to have a great time at the facility. You're going to learn how they make the booze. You're going to buy some. You're going to get a little drinky poo. You're going to find out what I've been talking about this whole time. I've got my bottle of Double Double sitting in front of you. In front of me, I wish it wasn't 630 so that I could actually drink some right now and some coffee. Absolute magic. RigHandDistillery.com. That's where you need to be. That's where you need to go. That's where you need to stock up on your alcohols, provided that you are of legal drinking age, of course. RickHandDistillery.com. Let's get to the first voicemail. Hey, Bag Milk. It's uh, Shroom Sauce from Twitter. Uh, a lot of folks know me over there as the number one uh, undisputed Mike Smith fan that there ever was. I believe um, you. I'd love to leave you some voicemails from time to time to tell you about all my other incorrect opinions. Please. But uh, I just wanted to say I'm listening to Better Late Than Never. I'm hearing you going ham on those sound buttons, on those sound effects, seeing that you're free from uh, Tyler Uremchuk's uh, authoritarian uh, grasp. Mm -hmm. And you know what? It warms my heart. I like it. Tyler Uh, can't control uh, me here. That's all I got for now. Um, Tell Frank that I said hello and that he's a very good boy. 
um, Sarah Valley, I mean, and uh, of course the other Frank. You know, he's pretty cool too. Yep. So, uh, all right. See you later. Have fun. Uh, Shroom Sauce is right. He is right. I'm allowed to touch all the buttons I want, and I'm going to go ahead and touch this one right now. Yeah, you don't deserve a gunshot load. How about this one? That's what goes on in Tyler's head anytime I touch a button that he doesn't want me to touch. Right? Of course. Of course. Uh, hey, Bag Milk, it's Presto. Apparently I upset a few people. Presto. Didn't see a limit on your show anywhere where I couldn't post more than one. There's no your limit. Your buddy with all the different voices posts as many as he likes. Yep. Polar Bear did a few. Mm -hmm. All good. I'll cut back. Um, cutting down Saskatchewan. Saskatchewan's a wonderful place. All the Edmontonians should love it because we're predominantly Oiler fans. And yeah, I might be opinionative, but in a free country, you're supposed to be able to have opinions and you're supposed to accept other people's opinions. So all good. At least I'm not on here suggesting a trade for Everly for uh, Archibald. Yeah, that's a winner. Anyway, great show, Bag Milk. Keep it up. I was wondering when my boy Presto was going to check in. Presto took some heat last week in the voicemails, and I didn't think it was all fair. He is right. I never said that there's a limit on voicemails because there is none. Leave as many voicemails as you want. The only thing I'm going to say now going forward is if I'm getting bored, I'm going to cut you off. Presto just made it all the way through. Taking shots around. Presto, you leave as many messages as you want, buddy. Don't listen to the haters. Here's another thing I would say. If you've got haters, that means you're doing something right. Right? At least that's how I'm living my life. Do you hear that? That's a little fun. <laughs> I can't, I can't play that or else I'm going to get taken down off YouTube. <laughs> Donkey Volley, he likes to put different music in the back of his clip sometimes, but it keeps getting me flagged on YouTube. I need to try to monetize this, man. This is supposed to be my job. It's supposed to be my job. Just really want to say to you, girls and boys, on the bus to Calgary, I am so jealous. And that's the donkey with my actual voice. Hello, hello, it's the donkey. Yes, it's my actual voice. Yeah, it's a bit weird. But honestly, get on that bus and smuggle some days on. Or some rather interesting, <laughs> interesting things. <laughs> the bus ride is great. Oilers fans, nation citizens, absolute best people you could ever hope to meet in your life and to have them all on the bus again. I said it off the jump. I absolutely missed it. It's my favorite thing. The only thing that I do regret about the bus trips is our record. Uh, nation Dan helped me out with this before we left Calgary on Sunday morning. He's like, you know, we're one in six on these trips now. And I'm like, ah, shit. Shit. Why are you bullying me? <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, this record is bullying me. Next message. Well, someone called Presto oh, no. has a bit of caffeinated coffee. Not really Presto. But Presto's alright. He's fine. You're good with me, Presto. This is my show. That's the good part about it. I get to do whatever I want. Oh, yeah. Ooh, this one's funky. Let's work it. Peloton. Peloton. What well, those greens? Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> it's so stupid. Uh, Donkey Ball, you're a madman. I like it. I like it. Here we go. Hey, Big Milk. I heard last week on the podcast that you said that you were super into pop punk music. Yes, I, I am. am also I am absolutely, sorry, I'm going to stop this. I'm going to join in on this message because I'm absolutely into pop-up music. My favorite band of all time, without question, Blink-182. When I was a kid, when I was playing, I think I was in Pee Wee when Enema of the State came out, and I just remember Enema of the State was just everything to me. I knew Dude Ranch. I remember them playing Damn It at uh, school sock hops, you know? I love it. I love it. Newfound Glory. Some 41, Good Charlotte, not really pop punk, but kind of classified in there anyway. H2O, Rancid, they're more punk than pop punk, but you know what I'm saying. I loved it all. So, a avid Blink-182 fan, but there's definitely more to the genre 
uh, nowadays than what I think there was back when Blink-182 was popular. That's probably um, true. I know a couple of the bands from back then, but I don't know all of them because I'm too young to know everything. But um, I definitely would highly recommend you listen to a couple of new bands that I've been listening to as of lately. Hit me. Um, Machine Gun Kelly is like 100% leading the charge with new pop punk music, and he's really revived the genre in my opinion. Uh, I actually I haven't listened to Machine Gun Kelly's new album yet, but the last one, uh, what was that called? Tickets to My Downfall. That was a great album. That was produced by Travis Barker, obviously the drummer of Blink One Eighty Two. Sounded a lot like a Blink album, outside of a different singer. I loved it. I haven't. I just haven't gotten around to his new album yet. As of recently, uh, Avril Lavigne just dropped a new album recently. Uh, JXPN, I think, is the other band that's been super bumping lately. Uh, a couple of bands like Point North, Calling All Captains is a local product from St. Albert I actually used to perform with. Calling All Captains from St. Albert. I'll support a local band. Calling All Captains. I might move down. I've heard of all these bands, by the way. So here's the way I generally listen to new music. It's funny, I was talking about this with Waz today at the office. I'll go in, if there's, so I'm an Apple Music guy. If you're a Spotify, I want to hear you. If I go on to new music on Apple Music, I'll just download all of the new albums that came out that week. This one's good. This one sucks. This one's good. I'll keep it. This one sucks. I'm punting it. That's the best part of streaming services to me. I don't really listen to playlists a whole lot. I download albums all the time. Um, so I'm actually pretty good at discovering new music, but pop punk is, I need help here. So I'm writing some of these down. Super, super rad band. Give them a listen. Um... Honestly, Bag Milk, I might just DM you a whole bunch of bands because this might not be everyone's vibe, but a hundred percent pop punk like is coming back and it's gonna be super rad here in like the next six months. I'm gonna say yeah, go ahead and DM me. I will absolutely accept your DMs telling me to check out new music. I love new music. I'm not one of those people, you know. So Sunday, as I mentioned earlier, Sunday's my thirty seventh birthday. I'm not one of those people that backs up to 40 and be like, well, the best music that I've ever heard came out in the early 2000s because that's when I was in high school. That's not how I operate. If there's new music that comes out now, I'm into it. I like it. I'll listen to it. And maybe one day I'm the boomer just like Jay in his Oodle Noodle video this week and I'm getting called a boomer. I'll accept that. But at the same point, I'm absolutely going to listen to the new tunes. 100%. I also listen to a lot of hip hop. So if you've got pop, pop punk recommendations, hip hop, let me know. Let me hear them. I want all of them. Uh, hopefully that last message didn't send in because I wasn't quite done recording. But basically, uh, all, all I was saying is <laughs> that I wanted to help you with your wine adventures. And I found um, oh, now we're a talking wine called Wine and Beyond that also sells Nation Beer for anyone who needs to try and find it quickly. Mm -hmm. Go to Wine um, and Beyond. But they have a section of their menu online that says food pairings uh, attached to their wine section. And if you scroll into it, there's a section with cheese. And if you click on it back now, now we're talking. you can see all the wines they recommend for cheese. Now we're talking. Now we are getting to the business that I started this podcast for. Now we're talking. Wine and Beyond, shout out to you for doing this wonderful service for all of us. And they're obviously called Wine and Beyond, so that means they're experts, right? That's how that works? Yeah. Uh, in general, yes, that would be how they work. However, they are not a sponsor of the podcast, so shout out to Arcadia. Rig Hand Distillery and Manscaped.com. Thank you. Hey, Big Milk. Uh, Jake here, longtime friend of the nation. Uh, first things first, I want to say you're better late than never podcast. Absolutely sublime. Um, keep doing what you're doing. It's fantastic. Absolutely sublime. How's that for a descriptor? If you feel like this podcast is sublime, please leave me a review. I would love to read that. Um, love everything that you're doing with it. Second of all, do you re-sign either Kyler Yamamoto, Jesse Pugliarvi, or both? Or do you let them walk if the price is too high and you let somebody like Lavoie come in or Holloway come in because they'll be on a cheaper, um, that entry level contract, right? As well as Yamamoto's been playing. And I'm a big pool party guy, the Bison King. I want him to do well, and I want him to stay with this team. You know, our cap situation is, you know, it's kind Not of great. in dire straits, Not right? Great. I don't, we don't really have a lot of money to play with. So let me know your thoughts. Thanks. 
I think, to be honest, and maybe this isn't the popular opinion, but I'm going to guess, and I heard Tom Gazzola talking about this on the radio the other day, I think. I think Tommy's right when he said both of those guys are going to get low-cost two-year bridge deals because they've been so streaky. They've been so streaky and inconsistent that I don't actually think it's going to cost a whole lot to keep either of them. Now, I don't think that that means they're going to be free, and I don't think that means it's going to be cheap necessarily, but I also don't think it's going to be like a 4 5 $6 million thing. Now, on the other hand of the equation, the Oilers, have they learned the lesson from what happened with Darnell Nurse? We are backing up to a $9.25 million contract starting next year after two bridge deals for Daryl. Now, the big, co- the big costly one was the second bridge deal that he took when that one is the one that should have gone long term. That probably could have been around five, five or six. Or I don't remember what they were talking about at the time, but one bridge deal. I don't mind that. Is one of those guys going to go supernova between now and then? Maybe. But again, I just think they've both been so inconsistent that I can't see the Oilers extending either of them long term, even though I would personally love it if they did. I don't know. What do you guys think? Hit me up. Jazz and Bagno. Hey, Bag Milk. I was just reading online, and I saw that the NHL and the NHLPA are creating a centralized system for no-trade lists so that a situation like Evgeny Danoff doesn't happen twice. Um, I just wanted your opinion on this, and uh, if you haven't seen it, um, obviously I'm assuming you're going to think it's probably a good idea, but uh, what are your thoughts? I mean, yeah, it's a great idea. Like, why I I'm, I was actually when I saw that news, I was surprised they didn't have one in the first place. I mean, what are you guys doing? You just got a fucking rolodex of papers floating around and just like willy nilly. I don't even understand how the choke me dad knob thing actually happened in the first place. Like, how did he have a note like a ten team? I think it was a ten team. If it's not, I'm I'm just I'm talking to my ass here. How did he have a no trade list of ten teams or whatever it was? And Vegas just didn't have it. Like, how did that happen between going from Ottawa to Vegas? How did, where did that get lost there? What emails were not properly sent or where's the attachments? I mean, I've sent emails without attachments. Is that what this, is that what this was? I was doing some invoicing for my social company a little while ago. Forgot to attach an invoice. I can see how that happens, but. Of course, it's a great idea to have a centralized database. Like, I don't understand why they didn't in the first place. The whole situation just seems so weird. And it wasn't Dadanov's fault either that he didn't want to go to Anaheim. It was on their no trade list. So what is he supposed to do? Just be like, it's not my fault you guys fucked up. It's not his fault. So, yes, have a centralized database. What are you guys doing? Like, why did it take this to... to, Why did it take this situation and this mess up for Vegas for the NHL to be like... It might be a good idea if we have everyone's no trade lists all in one place so we can look at them whatever we need. Dumb. Mr. Bag Milk, I have a mission for you. Go ahead. A mission that will be perfect for somebody of your expertise. I'm ready. The first step of this mission Go on. is to reach under your table mm. and grab the envelope that's taped to it. Uh-oh. Good luck. Holy shit, there is an envelope under my table. I'm going to read this later. How did this How did this even happen? How did this even happen? There is a legitimately... <laughs> there is legitimately an envelope underneath my table. It says, Happy birthday, bag milk, and cr- congratulations on the success of the podcast. Now go look in the cabinet above your stove. Should I do it? Hang on. I need to listen to this again, because obviously it's one of my shithead friends were in my house. Mr. Bag Milk, I have a mission for you. A mission that will be perfect for somebody of your expertise. I don't know who this is. And there's legitimately an envelope taped underneath my underneath my table so clearly my missus has something to do with this or one of my shithead friends was in my house okay so now i'm going to hang on i'm going to put on some music here and i'm going to go find out what's in the counter above my stove
get out of here. There is a Schmirnoff ice. Kyle, was that you? Was that you, Kyle? There's a Schmirnoff ice above my stove, so I ain't no quitter. I'll do it. You guys want to come into my house and mess around with me? How did this happen? Like, how long has this envelope been underneath my table? I need music. I have not had an ice in a while. Smearing off ice, but here we go. Oh, that was awful. That was absolutely awful. I don't know who did this. I have an idea. Kyle, if this was you, pal. That is a... You put the work in on this one, my friend. That's unbelievable. That is probably one of the best jokes that anybody's had on me for a while. So, I reached under... By the way, I reached under the table, just kind of been like, there's nothing going to be under there. And then I feel a piece of paper. Like, oh, shit. Hey, Bag Milk. It's Taylor. A uh, hot take? Pie? Taylor. Mm -hmm. Not that great. I mean, the best pies are better than the best cakes. You give me a pumpkin pie or a pecan pie... I mean, uh, but an average pie that, like, someone randomly just made an apple pie compared to someone who just randomly makes a chocolate cake, you give me that chocolate cake. Oh, pie, that's a, yeah, it's all right. Cake, always good. That's an interesting angle on that. The best pie is better than a mediocre cake, but the a mediocre pie is never going to beat a best cake. That's interesting, Taylor. So Taylor and I, obviously Taylor, if you don't know, he is a he's a DJ over at Sonic. We've been DMing. We've solved the mystery of who that is. Taylor's gonna come on this podcast. I'm gonna get him on here and we're gonna discover that we're gonna discuss this in person, he and I. We're gonna figure this shit out. Because I just disagree. There is no bad time for pie. There is bad times for cake. If you are sitting there at an office and you're in the waiting room and somebody goes, Do you want a piece of apple pie? fucking right you're taking it a little bit of ice cream come on you're having a great time everybody's enjoying that everybody is enjoying that piece of cake i don't feel like the same i here's another put it this way i have had pie or cakes get delivered to me on my birthday be it from family members co-workers friends or whatever <sighs> i can't believe i just got iced um i'll go without even having a piece what do you think about that what do you think about that taylor Hey, Baked Milk, I don't know if this is considered a hot take, but would you refer to Evander Kane as the Antonio Brown of the NHL? Has a lot of off-ice, off-field antics. I'm just going to stop. I don't even know. So I'm stopping it because I don't know anything about Antonio Brown's off-ice stuff or off-field stuff. I don't know anything about it. I've read the Evander Kane off-ice allegations. I've read all that stuff. I can't make a comparison because I just, I honestly have no idea. I enjoy watching football. I know who Antonio Brown is. I know that he left in the middle of the Buccaneers game is arguably one of the funniest things I've ever seen as somebody who doesn't really care about football, but I can't even make that comparison. I'm just not interested in it. Bag milk was your wildest hockey game I've ever been to. I've been to a few. Hit me uh, I mean, last night was pretty crazy, to be honest. Um, but I think the wildest I've been to was... Edmonton versus Columbus. McDavid scores that amazing goal in his rookie year, coming back with an injury. I don't think I've ever heard Rexall or Rogers' place be that loud after a regular season That'd goal. Be a good Maybe one. like an overtime goal, but just in general for a goal. Obviously, probably arguably the best goal of his career next to the Rangers one, but that was just nuts. I think no one, no one really expected that to happen. That's why it was so wild. That goal against Columbus. So I, the thing is, too, when you say that goal, the Columbus goal, instantly. Like that, you know exactly what we're talking about. There's tears of cheers in that, with that goal. Tears of cheers. So he makes the move and is, oh. He goes past one guy, oh. And then he breaks through the defense and around the goal. Ah! And then everybody goes crazy. <laughs> that was a good one, was. Hell of a game to be at. Shout out to you. Last message. I know this one's from Waz too because he asked me if he could sneak it in before I started recording. 
Bag milk back again. I also want to argue that the game or the or this clinched their first playoff spot in ten years. I was at that one. That was pretty wild. Although I think it was more emotional than wild, if that makes any sense. Yep. But if we're talking other sporting events, I was at Canada Costa Rica, of course, in November, and that was wild more so because of the amount of streakers that happened towards the end of the game. Like one guy, I <laughs> got absolutely demolished by security. I remember. Waz loves nudity, especially when it's in public. I don't know that for sure. I haven't asked Waz that, but allegedly, in my opinion, Waz loves nudity. So that was pretty crazy. I've never seen streakers. I didn't really expect that in Edmonton. I mean, Waz. Ah, oh, my sweet young Waz. Let me take you back. The Heritage Classic. The very, very first one. Do you remember? Were you born then, Waz? You might have been a toddler. You might have just been a baby. There was a streaker at that game, my precious Waz, and it was minus 9,000 that night, and his... Beans and Frank were shriveled and tiny. You got to think about it. Hopefully, he used the promo code BETTER20 at manscaped.com and got 20% off his order so that everything was neat and tight. You see it happen all the time in England and around Europe, but yeah, that was something unique to see, I would say. Well, Waz, I do appreciate your answers. Uh, I like the, the Connor goal against Columbus. That's a really, really good one. So if you were at that game, I'm very jealous of you. We were having a pint party that night, and I remember we were packing up a pop-up store that we were having for Nation Gear, and Chris, the intern, was carrying boxes out to the Nation truck, and as he was coming in, the place was going absolutely bananas. Everybody was freaking out, and then he's like, what happened? But Connor just scored one of the nicest goals I've ever seen in my life. He was like, no. I tried to get Chris on the uh, bus down to Calgary the other day, but it just didn't work. It was his birthday. I thought it was going to work. You know? There you go. The Rig Hand Distillery voicemail. Go to RigHandDistillery.com. Check it out. They've got all of their all of their wares there. You want a bottle of the Double Double I'm staring at? You should buy one. It's delicious and coffee. You're having a little Sunday funny. Maybe pour it on ice cream. I recommend you do. Also, you can pick up the tour and tasting coupon I've been talking about on the BeatCast at Rig Hand Distillery. That'll get you an entry and a free drink out at their facility in Niskew. So there you have it. Fresh episode of Better Late Than Never. Episode 15 is here. It's in the books, and it was good. I did not expect to get iced in my voicemail. So shout out to the coordination that went there. I appreciate all of you guys for listening and chiming in. This podcast is a lot of fun because of everybody that participates with it. And without you, I'm not doing it. Honestly, I did uh, getting to 15 episodes and having the numbers be our, what they are is I'm very, very grateful. So I'm going to end off the podcast again by saying thank you to all of you that are listening, all of you that are participating, all of you that are leaving messages and sending tweets and in some case icing me. In some cases, icing me. I also want to thank, of course, our friends at Arcadia Brewing. They signed on before anybody would. Check them out at Arcadia Brewing Co. on Instagram and Arcadia Brew Co. on Twitter. Manscaped.com, the promo code there is BETTER20. And, of course, Rig Hand Distillery for sponsoring the voicemail, as well as hooking me up with this beautiful bottle of Double Double that I'm listen- uh, that I'm looking at right now. Lastly... Please keep leaving some reviews. I checked before the podcast started. There's nothing new. I'd love to read some more reviews. I'd love to get bumped up on Apple Podcasts. I'd love to get bumped up on Spotify. And please keep sharing. Please keep leaving reviews. Please keep rating. And that's all. That's it. That's episode 15. It's in the books. We've got a big, big week coming up for the Oilers here. I'll be back next Wednesday. There's no game next Wednesday. Until then, go Oilers. Go to the link tree in my Instagram or my Twitter. Check out the Frank's Picks gear. We're winding down the season. I'm going to be making that donation over to the Edmonton Humane Society. So if you're looking for some gear, looking for some clothes, Frank's Picks gear is there. It's alive. It's well. And it is ready to have 100% of the proceeds donated to the Edmonton Humane Society. With that, episode 15 is in the book.